Hey everybody, this is Hearst Castle in San Simeon, California, located at just about the midpoint along the Golden State's coastline. The property was developed by newspaper tycoon William Randolph Hearst. The complex is quite stunning, so I thought I'd give you a high-speed tour and give you a little taste of what it's like to explore around the property. The footage you're seeing here is when I visited in late September of 2019. It was a Saturday, about 70, 75 degrees, around 11 o'clock in the morning. Now, Hearst Castle is a sort of monument to capitalism and excess, but now the mansion is owned and managed, ironically, by the state of California and its state parks department. And it seems to be run quite well, I might add. There are several different tour options to choose from. Tours are getting kicked off about every 10 minutes from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. The tour guide I had was a pretty funny guy and seemed to be very knowledgeable. He kept a good pace, got straight to the point, kind of told you everything you'd want to know, and didn't get too detailed and boring. He was also happy to take any questions anyone had. Ticket prices also seemed to be fairly reasonable. The Grand Rooms tour that I took, which is recommended for first-time visitors, was $25, and it lasted about an hour. At the end of the tour, as a bonus, the guides cut you loose and you are free to explore the grounds on your own. This is the Neptune Pool, one of the more popular hangouts for the celebrity guests that used to roam around Hearst Castle. The pool holds 345,000 gallons of water and was actually just recently restored and refilled back in August 2018. The Hearst family used to camp on this hilltop when William was a child and he fell in love with the spot. William's father, George Hurst, was a 49er and struck it rich in the Comstock Lode, which was a major discovery of silver in Nevada. William's mother did not want the property to be developed as she feared William would get carried away, but he eventually inherited thousands of acres of the property and his mother's fears were obviously realized. Normally I'm not super into tours like this, I have to admit, but I was feeling this one. As I mentioned, the weather was nearly perfect, the humidity being so close to the coastline felt great on the skin, especially coming from a dry climate like Colorado. And the 360 degree views were amazing on this hilltop. With the ocean to the west and the rolling hills to the east, I could definitely see why William Hurst loved this spot and chose to develop it as he became wealthier and wealthier in the newspaper business. Unfortunately, his methods to become so successful in the newspaper business were somewhat questionable as he was one of the pioneers in yellow journalism, placing emphasis on sensational headlines and focusing on human interest stories as opposed to valuing truth above all else and publishing only well-researched pieces. You can't help but think we still feel the effects of that a hundred years later in our postmodern world, but hey, if it wasn't him, it was going to be someone else that would use those techniques, right? William began development of the property in 1919, starting with smaller mansions like the one to the left, the initial goal being something along the lines of having a coastal retreat for the family. William and his wife had five children together, but by 1925 they had essentially separated, his wife and kids going to New York, and William setting up shop here in San Simeon, eventually gaining a mistress, actress Marion Davies. William and his wife never officially divorced, and many of the celebrity visitors of the time came to Hearst Castle with many preconceived notions about the mistress Marion Davies. Apparently though, she had quite the personality and would convert almost everyone very early in their stay at the castle. Hearst Castle reached its social peak during the Roaring Twenties and into the Thirties. However, the project continued through the 1940s until William had to permanently leave because of declining health and his eventual death in 1951. The main castle there, called Casa Grande, was heavily influenced by Spanish churches and included priceless relics and materials from all over the world. Hearst was an avid collector, and there are even things like ancient Egyptian sculptures on the grounds still outside and exposed to the elements today. The architecture of Hearst Castle was a true collaboration between Hearst and a lady named Julia Morgan, known as America's first truly independent female architect. She had a strong reputation for creating striking buildings that were very resistant to nature's worst, including hurricanes and earthquakes. Hearst recognized this and recruited her, and she would remain on the project through its entirety. The tennis courts may be the most dated looking part of the property, 
but they do have a cool little feature as there are tiny windows near the nets that open to a massive indoor swimming pool below. Hearst is said to have been a very gracious host as he would often have many celebrities over for long periods of time and he encouraged them to use the place. He wanted people playing on the tennis courts, he wanted people swimming in the pools, and there were very little restrictions on the property. Turning down an invitation from Hearst to visit is what would get you, as he was known to take it somewhat personally, and he truly had the ability to kill a career being the media mogul he was. Apparently, if you have enough clout and or cash, you can still swim in the pools and rent out the castle today. Lydia Hearst, the great-granddaughter of William, threw a private bachelorette party at the castle in 2016, and Lady Gaga shot a music video at the castle in 2014. William Hearst also had a fascination with exotic animals. On the tour bus ride down from the hilltop castle, you get to see remnants of a small zoo where he kept polar bears. And a bunch of zebras actually still roam the surrounding hills and can be easily spotted on the property, descendants of those imported to the area by William Hurst. This is the assembly room, the location of a mandatory evening cocktail meeting where newly arrived guests would be introduced to Mr. Hurst and each other before they were cut loose to enjoy the palace for the remainder of their stay. This is the refectory, the only dining hall in the castle. A typical dinner here, with Mr. Hurst seated at the center, could include names such as Charlie Chaplin, Winston Churchill, and Clark Gable, all seated at the same table. Orson Welles' 1941 film Citizen Kane was a satirical representation of Hearst and his life here at the castle. After my visit, I had to finally get around to watching the film and I have to say I found it a bit boring, albeit a very good attempt at recreating the property. Hearst himself was not at all happy with the film and its obvious satire of him. He forbid any mention of it in his newspapers, and as a result, it did not do very well commercially. The movie theater at Hearst Castle could accommodate 50 guests. Well, that about does it for this high-speed tour of Hearst Castle. Hope you enjoyed it, and I would definitely recommend a visit. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.